Maya Day. I am one of the chemistry teachers here at Roosevelt High School. And behind the camera, another chemistry teacher, Mr. Palmer here at Roosevelt High School. Welcome to chemistry. We're so glad that you're here today to tune in to our first chemistry demonstration of the year. So we are going to start off this demonstration. Um, you just saw a little bit of the um, materials that I have up here for this demonstration. If you have not already, make sure that you make some predictions of what each of these things are called. I'm going to do my best to not give too much away, but try your best to make sure that you answer that first question. All right, so now on to the second question. The second question asks, who is Ira Remsen? Who is Ira Remsen? I'm gonna tell you a short little story about Ira Remsen before we get going on our demonstration here. So Ira Remsen was an American chemist back in the early 20th and early, um, late 19th century. He first was a doctor and then realized he wasn't so much into people. So being a doctor, that's not the best thing, the quality to have. So he decided, oh, I'm going to move to Germany. And he moved to Germany and he ended up falling in love with chemistry. When he got done in Germany, he moved back to the United States, ended up being the president of um, John Hopkins University and also was one of the founders of the chemistry department at John Hopkins. John Hopkins University is a very well-known um, university on the East Coast that really does a lot of work for people um, that are studying medicine. One other little thing about Ira Remsen is he co-discovered this artificial sweetener called saccharin. Saccharin, you may have made, may have heard of it, but for sure your maybe your grandparents or your family that's older than you might have heard of saccharin. Nowadays they use aspartame for like diet sodas and diet. 7-Up and all the diet stuff. So he was one of the people that discovered saccharin. So take a moment. I've asked you who is Ira Remsen. I've shared a little bit of information. Go ahead and write down a couple things that you just heard me say about Ira Remsen. All right. Mm -hmm. So you've heard a little bit about Ira Remsen. This demonstration in particular is going to be a little story about Ira Remsen, about what he loved about chemistry. Why did he actually fall in love with chemistry? So I'm gonna end up in, throughout this demonstration sharing with you a little excerpt from his journal of when he started to fall in love with chemistry. So um, as I get going, I'm gonna read from my notes here. He starts out in his journal. While reading a textbook of chemistry, I came upon the statement Nitric acid acts upon copper. I was getting tired of reading such absurd stuff and I was determined to see what this meant. Copper was more or less familiar to me for copper scents were then just in use. He was like, reading a book. He's like, cool, read a book, cool, whoa. He's like, I just really wanna do the chemistry. I wanna do it. I wanna actually see what happens. So he's like, not into the, just like, Tell, him, tell me about it. He wanted to get his hands in it. So he had seen what a bottle marked nitric acid. So right here, I have a bottle marked nitric acid right here. This is what we call 15 molar nitric acid or 15.8. And it says on the side here, may, intensifies, it may intensify fire, oxidizer, keep away from heat, Spark and open flames causes severe skin burns and eye damage. Toxic if inhaled. Use in the hood. Use pr wear protective goggles. Eye and face protection, which I have. So we don't want to get this on our eyes. So he saw, but all, he didn't have all of those warnings back in the early 20th century. He just had bottle marked nitric acid. And this is on the table of the doctor's office where I was then what he's calling doing time. I did not know its peculiarities, but the spirit of adventure was upon me. So he's like, okay, here we go, nitric acid. What am I gonna do? All right, so he's like, okay, nitric acid. Okay, here we go. So what he did, having nitric acid in copper, I had only what to learn what the word act upon meant. The statement nitric acid acts upon copper would be something more than mere words. 
In the interest of knowledge, I was even willing to sacrifice one of the few copper cents then in my possession. I put one of them on the table, opened the bottle marked nitric acid, poured some of the liquid on the copper, and prepared to make an observation. So we're gonna do that in just a moment here. So just a really quick little heads up. I have a penny that is from 1979. A 1979 penny is pure copper. I don't know if you, some of you might know this already, but any penny that is made after 1982 is zinc and copper because in 1982, it became more expensive to actually make a penny out of copper. So Mr. Palmer and I dug through our bin of copper pennies and found some pennies that we can use for this demonstration today. So I'm gonna get started. So I'm gonna take this copper penny and unscrew this thing here. Notice if you don't have that in your diagram, you can come back to that. And I'm just to limit its having to, I don't wanna break anything. I'm gonna slide that copper penny down into this container. There we go. Put it back in here. All right. So I'm gonna take some of my nitric acid. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over here. I don't need that anymore. You might notice that there's some liquid in there. Um, I'm going to measure out about 20 milliliters of this nitric acid. Here we go. All right, close. Whoop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make have this reaction happen. As you're starting to see this happen, make sure you're writing down as much as you can or jotting down some notes that you can share um, a little bit later. So, and then I'm gonna also hold up the paper so Mr. Palmer can zoom in and kind of get a little bit more of the details of there. So, here we go. And then I'll continue the story from Ira Remsen. All right. Okay there. Ira Remsen then continu continues to say, but what was this wonderful thing which I beheld? The scent was already changed, and it was no small change either. Uh-huh. A blue-green liquid foamed and fumed over the, the scent and over the table. The air of the neighborhood was of this performance became color a colored dark red. A great colored cloud arose. This was disagreeable and suffocating. If this is one thing that you gather from chemistry this year about dark gases, please know that if you ever see a building with brown gas, if you ever see a building with purple gas, blue gas, any colored gas, get the heck out of there. That is a gas that is considered to be super dangerous. You do not want to inhale gases that have dark colors. There are other gases as well that are not colored that are dangerous, but for sure, if you see a colored gas coming from a building, get out of there. So later on in life, if you see that, you can maybe just remember this moment that this is a dangerous gas that you do not want to be around. So as you're thinking also, this is happening to him in this doctor's office. He just put a little bit of nitric acid on that penny and it's starting to fume and get uncomfortable. And so this, this is what he did. He's like, uh-oh, how should I stop this? I tried to just get rid of this objectionable mess by picking it up and throwing it out the window. So he like picked it up, threw it out the window. So check that out. But what do you think happens if you, something's reacting on the table? You pick it up. He also, then he continues to say, uh, I learned another fact. Nitric acid not only acts upon copper, it also acts upon fingers. So the pain led to another unpremeditated experiment. 
I drew my fingers across my trousers, his pants, I moved his hands across his pants, and another fact was discovered, nitric acid also acts upon trousers. So taking everything into consideration, that was the most impressive experiment and relatively and probably the most costly experiment I have ever performed. It was a revelation to me. It resulted in a desire on my part to want to learn more about that remarkable kind of action. Plainly, the only way to learn about it was to see its results, to experiment, and to work in a laboratory. So that is what he wrote in his journal. If you're wondering, okay, Mr. Palmer, Miss Mariah, they're in the chemistry room at Roosevelt High School. There's this dangerous gas that Miss Mariah has talked about. How's it gonna get out? You also notice the bubbling has kind of slowed down. This brown gas has bubbled into here. If you've not yet written down anything or jotted anything down for your, your own notes, Go ahead and there are a lot of things are happening. I'm gonna to touch the bottom, I'm gonna share with you. So as I touch the bottom here, it's very warm. It's like if I had just gotten coffee and just poured it out into a mug and I'm touching the bottom, it's like super, super warm. Usually I would have you a uh, student come up and touch the bottom, but now we're just gonna pretend that, <laughs> there we go. Feel the bottom there. It is warm. Mr. Palmer confirms. <laughs> and now our bubbles are almost done here. So I'm going to hold this back up. So, because guess what? How's the axe going to go out of there? Something else is going to happen. So we're, go ahead and just watch the rest of this video. favorite part. Make sure you're looking. Oh, the suspense. Here we go. Three, two, one. What? What? Check that out. Like, did you hear that sound? It was like a, like a straw. Where's our gas? I'm just gonna take it off really quick. And then um, Mr. Palmer's gonna zoom in here, but I'm just gonna take it off to swirl it around a little bit. Uh, come check out, where's that penny? Where's that gas? I'll hold up the white. So, where is the penny? Any, remember, anything you write down for your predictions of what's going on is correct. There's no wrong answer. We'll make some clarifications in the next time, next time we talk about this. Awesome. Here you go. Hmm. End it. And we are done. <laughs>